Hi there and welcome to this brand new SketchUp rendering tutorial using the iRender Next rendering program. Today I'm going to talk about one of the most exciting features of iRender Next which is the ability to make panorama images or actually 360 degrees images which means that you'll be able to show a client or whoever you're going to make the model for you're going to be able to show them all the surroundings show them what's all around your model which is especially useful if you have a model in which you can stand in the middle and you can look all around you and there's so much to see all around you so imagine uh, for instance here I've got an, a neighborhood with very many houses which you can be in the middle and then you can get a real impression as if you are really in that neighborhood so um, yeah that's what we're going to be learning today or which is what I'm going to be teaching you today because you might expect that this is very hard to do but I must say I thought this myself as well when I started uh, learning about this tutorial or learning about this feature from Iron and Next but I must say it's really easy much easier than I had ever expected and Iron and Next actually does most of the work uh, you do need an extra program for it but that's um, available for download for free you can find the download link in the description down below and it's a very easy simple program which you don't have to know that much about and um, you can download it in just a few seconds so no worries about that and it's free of course so uh, yeah there are different programs as well but this is free and it works perfectly fine in my opinion um, but if you want to pay for something which is even better maybe you can uh, check out something like that on the internet as well but uh, today I'll be using the free version uh, of this program so as you can see here we've got a neighborhood of six houses one of the houses which I've ever created before and I've decided to uh, put it over here kind of as if it's a holiday park that's at least what it's uh, the feel that it creates to me so um, yeah let's start the tutorial right now over here we've got the viewpoint or the perspective uh, person and we're going to put it down over here in the middle or actually wherever you would like to place uh, your viewpoint uh, let me see what's the name of this feature or this tool I believe I cannot see it oh it's the position camera uh, let me place it right in the middle you can place it wherever you want if you're currently in your own model as well so as you can see we are now just in our model kind of and now we've got to go to view camera and then to field of view and then down here you see that it's currently at 60 degrees which is important because let me uh, show you what happens if I put it on like 45 uh, you just have to type in by the way you can't type it anywhere else you just have to type it at the right bottom there as you can see there is quite a difference between using 45 and 60 there but 60, 60 is in my opinion the best way to go and of course a 360 degrees image which means that 60 degrees in one sixth of that which means that one sixth of the entire model is being shown while you are uh, in the panorama so now you can add a scene which might make it easier for you in case you want to make several panoramas and you want to uh, create several scenes at once but uh, I'll show you shortly how to do that but it's uh, not really necessary uh, because if you start rendering right now and you use the right settings which I'm going to talk about later you will not have any problem but I'll also show you how to use the scenes so in order to create a scene go to view animation and then add scene click create scene and that's basically it then go to scene manager and just for your own organization kind of just make sure that it's 360 and just say that and then we've got an extra one which we can delete no problem there and then we've got a scene so in case we're going to move around and then you think you know now it's time to create a panorama just click over there and we're exactly right back where we were when we started this so now the fun part comes because we've got to change some settings but actually only one setting which is the great thing or part about this because it's really easy to do which you might not expect so go to load options and then here you are in the setup options from our render next and then make sure that you go over here to render and currently I have it on already but make sure that you have a tick in front of the box which uh, says make panoramic image and panoramic images often have to be 
in a 2.1 or a 2 to 1 image uh, ratio which means that here we've got 2000 against 1000 you can of course make the resolution higher but then you've got to make it higher yourself but it's standard on 2000 by 1000 and I would advise to use that ratio or not just that ratio but also that quality to check out whether you like the viewpoint you've chosen because rendering that does not take that much time but if you want to uh, render something different as well or render it on a higher quality you can of course do that here we're going to uh, put it up to I think um, yeah 5000 or 6000 would be perfect um, to just have a good looking image and also, of course always make sure that you have used SketchUp aspect ratio because otherwise it might get out of that 2 to 1 ratio and therefore uh, it will not be able it might not be able to open it uh, using the FSP uh, program which we're going to be working with later on during this episode so right now we've got make panoramic image and we've got our aspect ratio correct and we've got the quality which we want so now we can simply click on the green render button and then I'll get back to you once we are back when it has been rendered and we're going to save it alright so here we are as you can see we're in our render next and the image the panoramic image which we wanted to render has been rendered but now it seems kind of strange that does not really look like the way uh, it looked before when uh, we were in the model so therefore we need to have the right program in order to make it work but before we jump into that program it's important that we first save our files so therefore here in our render next you can simply click on the save button choose the name you would like to choose and just make sure that it's uh, saved as a JPEG and then save it anywhere you would like to save it uh, where you can in the end find it once we are in the program so now let's jump right into the program so here we've got FSP viewer the program which you have to download in order to show uh, the panoramic image which you've created then click over here on open an image and then you choose the image and uh, Where you've just saved it look for that and then as you can see here. We are we can look around we can do whatever you want in our uh, That in our program which we've got over here and you can look around you can zoom in which makes that you can really show the model that you've created to like a client or a friend or whoever you want to show your model to and it will definitely impress very many people and I'm personally really happy that I've got this feature because I'm sure that in this way I'll give people or be able to give people a much better interpretation of what the model that I've created for them looks like so therefore I think this is a very useful feature and as you've seen in this tutorial it's really easy to do as well because you don't even have to add a scene that's just for your own ease but you can just make sure that you have the option create a panoramic image on and then you can create the panoramic image already it's best to do it at 60 degrees but if you want to do it at 30 that's perfectly fine as well um, but uh, keep in mind that the lower the number of degrees you'll have the more uh, people will have to look around in order to see um, what you uh, yeah see the entire yeah, model that you've created so um, yeah I found this a very useful feature and I'm definitely happy that I ran the next made it so easy uh, to create this but um, yeah I hope you found it useful as well please let me know in the comments down below and make sure that you check out any of my other render tutorials uh, which I did for I render next so in that way you'll be able to um, understand this program perfectly so anyways thanks for watching this video I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope to see you back later